Cheryl, do you feel that the legislators have let you down? Yes. Most of them, anyway. They're liars. Welcome to CMMNJ TV. be alive today judging by all her friends with MS that have gone by the wayside since she has been using it and she's never recreationally used marijuana in her life she does not smoke marijuana she does eat it and drink it let some security through let some security through Cheryl is in possession of marijuana right now Cheryl's got some marijuana right down there we call it medicine you can call it whatever you want and there is no law in the world that's going to stop me from doing what I can for her. She's not going to live much longer. Does everybody get it? Does everybody get it? Does everybody get it? I'm Ken Walski, Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. The mission of our organization is to educate the public about the benefits of marijuana. Marijuana is a safe, effective, and inexpensive therapeutic agent for a wide variety of diseases, symptoms, and conditions. No patient should suffer needlessly without it, and no patient should ever go to jail for following the advice of a doctor. Join us and learn more about the exciting science of medical marijuana. I'm here today with Jim Miller, President, co-founder of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey, and with Reed Gusiora, Assemblyman Reed Gusiora from um, the New Jersey Legislature, who's our honored guest today. Assemblyman Gusiora has been one of the strongest uh, proponents of uh, marijuana law reform in the New Jersey State Legislature, Reed, and I want to thank you uh, on behalf of uh, the Board of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey and all the medical marijuana patients in New Jersey for your, for your outstanding efforts uh, for more than a decade. Uh, on, in, on behalf of these patients. So thank you, sir, and I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, your efforts in the legislature on, on this behalf. Great. Well, thanks so much, Ken and, and Jim. I'm honored to be here as well. I know, uh, Jim, I probably know a little longer than you, one of the soldiers with uh, his wife, Cheryl, and used to lobby for, uh, for, for good things to, tr to try to alleviate suffering, and I think that's what it's all about. Uh, Cheryl, interesting, the, the people who testified on, on the medical marijuana most profound effect were the people with MS that, that um, could not get out of bed or had their muscles so constricted and that nothing else worked. And medical marijuana or then mar even marijuana, whether illegally uh, uh, obtained or not, uh, uh, alleviated so much suffering. And uh, it's just a shame that Cheryl couldn't be here to, to enjoy it. Uh, or enjoy the fruits of her labor. Um, I know you were champion going to the state house and having a uh, sm smoke out there. And uh, but those were exciting times. And at least we did pass uh, medical marijuana, and especially with your advocacy um, and trying to get a, our foot in the door. And, and uh, unfortunately, while New Jersey is the most strictest uh, state in the, the union, at least we do indeed have our foot in the door. If yes, I could uh, offer my own real quick welcome and say uh, uh, I appreciate what you said about Cheryl. Um, she knew it would never happen in her lifetime the whole time she did that, but you offered what I would say is one of the five brightest spots in her life. You may not remember it. 2000, I have a picture of us together right afterwards. You came in beaming to her and said, I just filled out my Operation uh, Vote Smart card. I voted yes on medical marijuana. <laughs> and she was so happy. She felt like she had a little part to play in that. So uh, while it did happen too late for her, she knew that with you, picking up the steam like that. She did know it was going to happen, and she felt she did play a part, so thanks. She was a real sweetheart. Yeah, and, and Reed, you were the original sponsor in the assembly of the New Jersey Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Act when it was introduced in 2005, and that act spent uh, five years in the legislature until it passed in 2010, so there were ample opportunities for 
patients like Cheryl Miller and others to come and testify before the legislature, legislative committees, uh, what on, on, in behalf of this, uh, this legislation. Now, the, the bill was originally a, a fairly good bill. It allowed home cultivation, uh, allowed uh, chronic pain for any reason, and um, um, recognition of out-of-state ID cards. Um, you know, but al somewhere along the way, the bill got changed, and uh, uh, the bill became sort of a shell of itself. And then there was the regulations after it was passed into law and signed by Governor Corzine. Uh, of course, Governor Christie came on and uh, imposed some very serious restrictions in the regulatory process. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the restrictions that, that this, and, and whether or not this, this legislation is still consistent with the legislative intent? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I had a, a, a co-partner in the legislature, Michael Patrick Carroll, who is right. as much on the right as I am on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did join together. This is a, a good libertarian issue and, mm -hmm. and one that uh, advocates for, uh, for the patients. And, and medical marijuana has shown great promise. Originally, we modeled it after the California law, which obviously is uh, less restrictive than New Jersey, but a lot got in the uh, cutting room floor, um, and even to get past a lot of de Democrats who were leery about mm -hmm. allowing the, the law to proceed. So we narrowed it as best we could, but still start the program as more mm -hmm. or less of a pilot program. Uh, you had to have six ailments, uh, whether it's uh, AIDS, um, cancer, neuroskeleton disorder, Crohn's disease, um, glaucoma, MS, and uh, I'm probably forgetting one. But um, they were the patients that were permitted to have uh, medical marijuana. Unfortunately, the Corzine administration uh, was cut short and then Chris Christie came in and it was his health department that issued the regs and they made it much more restrictive and things that we wouldn't even envision um, uh, being restricted, unfortunately, happen with the regulations. So we're trying to work with the Department of Health. I have a good relationship with Commissioner O'Dowd, but nonetheless, there's a lot, I would say there's a lot of political reasons for not uh, advancing or making the law more, less restrictive. Um, but we're working. We're working with the mm -hmm. commissioner, trying to open the door further, and talking about legislative hearings to open the door uh, further. Um, right now, we're supposed to have six dispensaries. We only have three. Mm -hmm. And of those three dispensaries, only one is completely working, and one is having a uh, problem with the product, and one is having no product at all. Mm -hmm. So we have to be a lot more vigilant, both advocacy groups and also um, uh, the authors of the legislation to try to pry the doors open further. Mm -hmm. So you're working with the Department of Health uh, to try to uh, work on some of these regulations that are that are stopping the program from really fully uh, being the way it was meant to be. I mean, we have nine million people, almost nine million people in the state of New Jersey, and and in four years since the bill passed into law, we've only got about two thousand people who have actually gotten medical marijuana. Well, let me give you a, a, a quick example. We. Uh, a doctor has to be actually be qualified by the Department of Health mm -hmm. uh, to prescribe medical marijuana. Yet these same doctors can prescribe opiates, they can prescribe uh, cocaine, but they need a special dispensation from the Department of Health before they can prescribe medical marijuana. And a lot of doctors don't want to be that pot doctor, don't want to have uh, well-intentioned patients coming to their office to try to get a prescription. and. Um, it, it's a stumbling block for a lot of doctors to take part in the program. And so then there's an access to the doctors. They may or may not be on your health network. And uh, so you're on your own trying to get these doctors and they're so far and few in between. Also the patients have to pay a $200 uh, registration fee with the Department of Health. But if you had glaucoma or any of the diseases that medical marijuana shows uh, promise to, you don't have to pay a registration fee with the Department of Health for those ailments, but yet with medical marijuana, you have to also register with the Department of Health. So there's an overall chilling effect that we need to um, erase so that more doctors participate and there's more patients that actually have access to the drug. Right, only a couple hundred doctors in the entire state have joined this physician registry. In the entire registry, no other state that has a medical marijuana program, there are 23 states now, have a physician registry. So that's really, we believe, had a, a real chilling effect on, on, on the We did find uh, out, too, I, I might, sorry to interrupt, but that um, with their names being public record, 
uh, when one of our board members called at the time the 150 doctors who were on the registry, there was, uh, they were saying they were getting a lot of complaining calls, people uh, berating them to call up just to do that because they were a public target and word like that gets around, I can almost understand the reluctance and uh, the physician registry, in my opinion, is one of the biggest roadblocks that we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. And then you have doctors who won't participate in the program because they say, look, I went to medical school and I have a, uh, a license to practice, but yet now I need special permission from the Department of Health before I could uh, recommend uh, medical marijuana. I've heard that too. So right. you have a lot of stumbling blocks for doctors to participate. And then patients, just because of the cost, the access of somebody from Cape May then now has to go up to Montclair or to Woodbridge for medical marijuana when there's not a product in, in Egg Harbor. It's inconvenient, and so they're going to go on the uh, black market, so to speak, to get their medical marijuana when if we made it more accessible and less restrictive and created the uh, variants that we need in the, in the, in the uh, in the medical marijuana, we'd have more patient uh, participation as well. That's a fact. Right. And the, uh, one of the requirements of the health department for physicians to take part in this program is to have current educational training in uh, pain management and addiction control. And nothing about how marijuana actually works in the body, nothing about the emerging science of the endocannabinoid system that really is uh, it's undeniable in, from a scientific point of view. Tell us, too, about some of the legislative uh, remedies and, and where we are with some of the, the proposed legislation to deal with, these pro with the problem of the uh, ineffective uh, medicinal marijuana program, Reed. Sure. We, what we would like also envision in the law was to expand the program once, uh, once the program was fully functional, but we don't even have the six dispensaries open. There are plenty of other ailments and diseases that could be benefit from medical marijuana. So we're not even there where the Department of Health can look to see how we can expand the program. Mm -hmm. There's proposals to legislatively expand the program, and I favor that. There's also legislative proposals just to legalize marijuana. So even while under the guise of recreational use, you could still get greater access to medical marijuana for your ailments or diseases. Mm -hmm. There's also decriminalization bill so that while it's not perfect, um, we shouldn't be making criminals out of patients, which we are right now. Right now, the, the marijuana law in the state of New Jersey, you can um, face six months in jail, you could face loss of your driver's license, you could face up to a $1,000 fine, and then $800 in state-assessed mandatory assessments. So uh, the penalties for mar simple possession of one joint um, is quite steep, and if we can lessen or decriminalize the laws, and make it a lot better, if we can legalize marijuana, that would even make it better still. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of the civil penalties have a more far-ranging uh, impact on a person's life for being caught with a, a small amount of marijuana. You can be expelled from public housing, you can lose student loans, you can lose parental privileges, uh, you lose your driver's license, uh, you'd be barred from employment, you know. So, so you know, these are, are very, you know, serious uh, I impacts on a person's life. The difference then between uh, decriminalization and legalization, Reed, uh, my understanding is that uh, you know, decriminalization still, while it, while it removes the criminal penalties for possession of marijuana and protects uh, medical marijuana patients to a certain extent, um, you know, it still leaves them uh, to find their product on the black market, which you know, is still, it still prohibits the, the production and distribution of marijuana uh, and um, you know, leaves only limited, you know, you're limited to whatever is available on the black market uh, with, with a decriminalization uh, bill. So you know, it, it, has, it has a more limited you know, uh, appeal, I, I suppose, or uh, solution to, the, to sure. the problem of the... And, and as you know, there are different strains of marijuana, some that have psychotropic benefits, some that have physical um, health benefits. And it is better if, it, if it's purchased through a dispensary because you can get the mar medical marijuana that you need for your ailment. Um, so if we had greater access to the dispensaries, greater access to the doctors, um, we can alleviate a lot of suffering even without going to legalization route. Mm -hmm. But because, unfortunately, the Christie administration uh, has been quite stubborn in expanding the law or making even it reasonable to have access, um, we're always going to have those problems and we're going to have those legislative challenges. 
Well, uh, where are we with the legislation now? My understanding is legislation, when it's proposed, it is assigned to a committee, and then the chairman of the committee decides whether or not they're to hold hearings on this uh, particular legislation. Uh, have these uh, bills, proposed bills, uh, been assigned to committees, or are, where, where are we with that? They have, but, um, and the, the lead sponsor for legalization has been uh, Senator Scateri in the Senate. Um, from leadership, they've, they don't want to take on the Christie administration because they know it may be a dead end in, in any event. Um, my, my feeling is that we, sh we should go with at least the minimal, uh, the decriminalization bill, uh, which would go a long way, and possibly the governor would go along, as Jim, you pointed out, um, in his drug reform and sentencing reform. Um, certainly, you should not make a criminal out of somebody with one joint. Decriminalization would be consistent with what he said in the past. Yeah, and I think we, sh we could present it to him. I still don't, you know, you don't have to give up the legalization, you don't have to give, mm -hmm. give up on expanding the program, but I think at the minimum, well, the governor's made it very clear that he doesn't want to expand the program in any event. So, so it's not an either or thing. I think that's an important distinction. You just made some people say, well, we should be only about medical. Some say we have to go for legalization because that would take care of everybody, including patients. Yep. And then there's the decriminalization. Um, that we can do all three, and I think it's important to make that distinction um, that it's not either or, um, and that we should keep an eye on certain realities as to what's achievable and what's not. Yeah, and we could be in line with New York and other neighboring states exactly. that have decriminalized. Yes. Um, and there are, as we know, there's two states that have already legalized, uh, Washington and Colorado. Initial reports, there's some bumps, but there's no catastrophe. That's the answer um, to my, uh, my, my uh, quiz question. When I ask people the straight face, there's only two states in the entire country where all medical marijuana patients are able to get their medicine. <laughs> Most people know the answer, yes. but the only way that will happen is going to be through legalization. Yeah. I do agree, get uh, the sickest off the battlefield while we go for that, though, and that's again doing both at once. But if I may say, if, if uh, Senator Scutari's legalization bill passes in New Jersey, uh, children who are under 21 would still not have safe and legal access to medical marijuana That's true. Uh, if, they had a, if they had a qualifying condition. So it really depends on how legalization is done, whether sure. or not it really meets the needs of all the patients in sure. the state. Good point. Well, and, and there have been some real tough examples of, of juveniles that, that uh, whether through seizure, um, can find uh, alleviation. Um, and then you have these parents that say, we're moving out of state because my child doesn't have access to those drugs. Um, so we can do all of the above, even if with legalization at 21, the medical marijuana program should certainly take care of uh, the juveniles. And we're very, very grateful for you to stop by CMMNJ TV and talk to us about uh, your decade and a half of advocacy for medical marijuana and uh, your long relationship with Jim Miller and, and his uh, wife Cheryl. And uh, we're just very grateful for um, you know being a champion for this cause. Well, thanks so much, Ken and Jim. It's always a pleasure. I echo his sentiments, <laughs> word for word. Thank you. All right, great. God bless. Thank you. Take care. Good to see you. Hi, I'm Lefty Grimes from SativaCross.com. I'm here to introduce the Ignorance Is No Excuse Tour. The Ignorance Is No Excuse Tour is a virtual army of medical marijuana patients in New Jersey going to different police departments asking the police where we can medicate with our medical marijuana legally and appropriately. Governor Christie did not disseminate the medical marijuana guidelines to the local municipalities. Governor Christie has done everything in his power to make sure this program fails. And we're here to make sure it doesn't fail. We're here to make sure patients don't get arrested. Rather than just smoking our marijuana where we think we can smoke it, we're going to the police for guidance. You haven't just gone to Keensburg, you've gone to just about every department in Monmouth County. Every department is different. Some know nothing at all about the Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Act. You can't smoke a joint here. Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah, this is, you can't smoke a joint here. Not a problem. You're going to have a problem in a couple of minutes. Because I just need to smoke, I'm a, that's all. Listen, I know what you're all about, okay? I know what you're doing. And some know the law inside and out. You can smoke marijuana any place that you can legally smoke a cigarette. Some municipalities have breathe easy zones. The worst thing that can happen to me is I get a $120 ticket for smoking in public. It's $125, I'll pay it, all right? But don't tell me I can't use my medicine. We're finding that New Jersey police are the most professional police in the country, hence the world. We're finding that the bigger and tougher they are, the bigger their hearts are. 
and most of these cops are just trying to do their jobs. The problem is with management. Just like on the food shows, Sativa Cross are patients helping other patients. We could close our shades and lock our doors and smoke our medical marijuana and watch the world go by, but we're watching other patients and children suffering and dying. We can't do that. Why are we the ones that are having to do this? Why is Chris Christie making patients' lives harder instead of easier? The parents of these children have enough to deal with in life. Why is the government making them jump through all these hoops? I just don't get it. This fight has been going on for many years. I remember watching Cheryl Miller suffering from multiple sclerosis, being pushed around in a bed. She fought for medical marijuana till her last breath. But Cheryl knew she would never see medical marijuana in her lifetime, yet she still fought for others. And that's what we're doing. With Cheryl's legacy, we will carry on the tradition of helping other patients. When you see suffering right in front of your eyes, it changes everything. A few years ago, I met Vivian Wilson, and I love her dearly. She's a sweetheart. I was supposed to film Vivian one day, and she had a seizure in front of me. And I was supposed to film the seizure, but I couldn't do it. It was shocking to me to see a little kid have a seizure. Megan said it wasn't that bad of a seizure. It was only a 10-minute seizure. It was really shocking seeing that, and I'm seeing just a slice of what this family goes through every day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day, every night, all day, all night. This is what they live. It's a horrible thing to have to see your daughter suffer like this. I wasn't able to film Vivian's seizure. Unfortunately, I did catch Sarah's seizure. Sarah's mom is beside herself. Sarah doesn't qualify for edibles. She's over 22 years old. She's too old. But Sarah can't smoke weed. How can Sarah smoke weed? She can't even hold a bomb. She has no idea what to do. A lot of us patients are suffering ourselves, and that's why we have empathy for other patients. If you see what these kids are going through, it will affect you. Poor Jax has been in and out of the hospital. The doctors are forcing Jax to take pharmaceutical medications that are deadly and hurtful to him. Jax only has a couple of years left to learn how to smoke marijuana. I don't think he's gonna be able to smoke marijuana by the time he's 18. He needs oil. Jenna was at the state house earlier this year. She was wearing a helmet. And now that she's on anointing oils, cannabis, and frankincense, and holy basil, her seizures have lessened so much that she's able to start reading and writing and learning all from anointing oils, holy basil, and frankincense. All you atheists out there, sorry I can't help you. Poor Pietro had a seizure at Scott's trial in Sparta. Tuffy's dad was ignored by Chris Christie for eight town hall meetings in a row. Ricky finally got up to say something and was escorted out for trying to help his daughter. And we all know the tragic story of little Sabina Rose who died waiting for her medical marijuana. I know a lot of you out there have hearts. How can you let these kids suffer like this? How can you let these kids die like this? We need people like you helping us. Why aren't you helping us? Why aren't you helping these children? Nicole Montanez did a national photo shoot called Face of Cannabis. It's little children all over America suffering and dying, but getting relief from medical marijuana. This is a video of the New Jersey photo shoot. This is the Face of Cannabis. Hair still got all the oil you look in so it. good. Crap from there. It looks great, actually. <laughs> it really does. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to see you. There's my baby. Are you excited that Rocco's here? I love that belly. I love that belly. <laughs>
and I'll use her wow. SSI money for her. She don't even get enough from SSI to buy her. That's, that's insane. <laughs> Oh, I love you too, sweetie. For more information about the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey, join us at our free public meetings on the second Tuesday of every month at the Lawrence Township Library in Mercer County, New Jersey from 7 to 9 p.m. Snacks are served and all are welcome. Remember, every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Shut down this second, you are a for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody got arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. <laughs> Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. It could be you.